Here are the top stories for today, March 26, 2020. President Duterte supports the National Action Plan of the Interagency Task Force to Stop the Spread of COVID-19. The Anti-Red Tape Authority urges agencies to adopt a zero-red tape policy amid intensified efforts against COVID-19. The New People's Army attacks an Indigenous People's Community a day after calls for the declaration of a global ceasefire. And the DILG is confident the enhanced quarantine will be lifted by April 12. Good day, I'm William Theo. Welcome to the PNA Newsroom. Our top story for today, President Rodrigo Duterte agreed with the National Action Plan being drafted by the Interagency Task Force for the Management of the Emerging Infectious Diseases to combat the spread of coronavirus disease 2019. Under the National Action Plan, the IATF will serve as the policy-making body of the operations, while the National Task Force COVID-19 will act as operational command. The National Incident Command would take charge of the day-to-day -day concerns and operations in the fight against COVID-19 pandemic, while the NDRRMC was tasked to identify government agencies that would be part of the proposed NTF COVID-19. The new task force COVID-19 will be headed by Defense Secretary Delfin Lorenzana. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograles said the National Action Plan for COVID-19 mandates the adoption of measures that will provide clear, accurate, and timely information to support the operations against COVID-19. He added that measures for containment and mitigation was also adopted to reduce the number of new cases, it also seeks the mitigation of consequences and impact of COVID-19 pandemic to the social, economic, and personal security of the Filipino people. As the number of infected people continue to rise, the Department of Health says it is planning to procure additional diagnostic test kits to improve the country's testing capacity. On Tuesday, Duterte signed Republic Act 11469 or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, which grants him special powers to address the COVID-19 pandemic in the country. Under the new law, Duterte is allowed to realign available national budget funds to augment the national government's response to COVID-19. Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verriere said the government can now purchase new COVID-19 test kits considering that the government will receive an additional budget for the procurement of medical supplies. Meantime, Verriere maintained that the government still cannot pursue mass testing for COVID-19, stressing that the country has no enough test kits. She also insisted that mass testing in the Philippines is only possible if the government has enough resources. Meanwhile, the health department said the increase in the number of persons who have COVID-19 could be an artificial rise of cases. Since the government has implemented the enhanced community quarantine, Health Undersecretary Maria Rosario Verjere said there would be another modeling estimate to be made to see if there would be an increase or decrease of COVID-19 cases. She also clarified reports about the spread of COVID-19 in the country reaching its peak by mid-April to June. Nagkaroon tayo ng pagsasaayos ng ating mga proseso sa ating laboratorio at saka na-extend po ang ating capacity ng ating laboratories plus the additional kits na dumating sa atin na mas nagkaroon tayo ng uh, capacity para ma-reduce natin po yung mga backlog na nagkaroon tayo for these past weeks. Kumbaga, baka dati pa sila at atin lang hinahabol sa ngayon. Kaya sinasabi natin, it might be an artificial rise. Kaya ang binibilin din natin sa ating mga kababayan, wag po kayo magulat. But in these coming days, Pag natanggal na po natin lahat ng backlogs, makikita na po natin ang totoong mga numero sa pagtaas o di kaya pagbaba ng ating kaso dito sa ating bansa. The government will allocate a 25,000 pesos funeral support fund to indigents who die due to coronavirus disease. Cabinet Secretary Carlo Nograla said the DSWD will be providing the fund to indigents who suffered with COVID-19, whether confirmed cases or persons under investigation. Under the guidelines issued by the IATF, funeral and internment services are still allowed to remain operational despite the quarantine. 
and general infection precautions must be strictly observed. If the deceased is a Muslim, the remains should be placed in an airtight sealed bag or container and buried in the nearest Muslim cemetery within 12 hours while observing Muslim rites. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año said the DILG and LGUs will monitor and penalize funeral homes that refuse to provide logistics and transport remains of COVID-19 cases. Funeral services staff and personnel are exempted from the community quarantine and funeral companies are directed to provide transportation and or housing accommodations for funeral service staff. Kadiwa stalls are set up to ensure supply of farm produce supplies in Manila and checkpoints will now be supervised and manned by Marines and police. More on these from Lake Kabagani. The Department of Agriculture set up Kadiwa stores amid the enhanced community quarantine. Kadiwa, which stands for Katuwang sa Diwa at Gawa para sa Masaganang Ani at Mataas na Kita, is a marketing strategy of the DA which directly connects the food producers to the consumers and lessening the cost of the products. Agriculture Secretary William Dar has been continuously urging LGUs to engage in the Kadiwa services to help ensure food supply in metropolitan areas while providing markets to the local farmers' produce. Meanwhile, the Pasig City government has installed five roving stores or mobile palenques which will stroll in all of its barangays so residents do not have to go to the markets to buy produce. Pasig City Mayor Vico Soto on Tuesday said the initiative seeks to ensure that the people will not flag to the Pasig Mega Market and other public markets. In other news, the Philippine Navy has deployed the 12th Marine Battalion to man various checkpoints all over Luzon. The additional Marine troops will augment the Navy's fleet Marine deployment in Rizal, Marikina, Montinlupa, Cavite, and Laguna. The Philippine Navy last week has deployed over 500 sailors and marines to help man the checkpoints. Still on the implementation of the enhanced community quarantine in Luzon, the Department of Justice on Wednesday said village checkpoints must now be under police supervision to prevent misapplication of the rules on the enforcement. The move is in response to the complaints arising from LGUs and barangay officials crafting their own guidelines which caused undue delay in the delivery of cargoes carrying food and other basic necessities. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Lead Kabagani. Still to come, the Anti-Red Tape Authority urges agencies to adopt a Zero Red Tape policy amid intensified efforts against COVID-19. The New People's Army attacks an indigenous people's community a day after calls for the declaration of a global ceasefire. More on these when the PNA Newsroom continues. Sa matinding laban natin sa Coronavirus Disease 2019, sugpuin din natin ang pagkalat ng fake news. Huwag magbahagi ng impormasyon na hindi tiyak ang pinagmulan. I-check mabuti ang source ng balita. Kumuha lamang ng impormasyon mula sa mga official channel ng Department of Health. Huwag magpadala sa maling balita. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Tandaan ang tamang paraan ng paghuhugas at paglilinis ng kamay upang makaiwas sa iba't ibang karamdaman. Basain ng tubig ang mga kamay at sabunin. Unang sabunin ang mga palad at ang likod ng mga kamay. Kuskusin na maigi ang pagitan ng mga daliri at maging ang mga kuko. Isunod ang pagitan ng mga hinlalaki at kuskusin ng paigot ang mga dulo ng mga daliri sa magkabilang palad. Banlawang mabuti ang mga kamay sa malinis na tubig at patuyuin ang mga kamay gamit ang single-use towel o air dryer. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Pangalagaan ng sarili laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019 hanggat maaari umiwas sa mataong lugar. Iwasang hawakan ang ilong at bibig, maging malinis sa katawan at ugaliin ang wastong paghuhugas ng kamay. 
takpa ng ilong at bibig kung uubo o babahing. Umiwas sa mga taong nagpapakita ng sintomas ng coronavirus disease gaya ng lagnat, ubo at sipon. Magsuot ng face mask kung kinakailangan. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa. Kaya natin to isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. You're still watching the PNA Newsroom. The Anti-Red Tape Authority on Wednesday urged agencies to adopt a zero red tape policy as the government beefs up its efforts to respond to the coronavirus disease crisis in the country. ARTA Director General Jeremiah Belhica made this remark after President Rodrigo Duterte in a public address late Tuesday night expressed frustration over red tape which has caused delays in the delivery of government services. ARTA required all government agencies in the executive department, including local government units and government-owned or controlled corporations, to fast-track measures during the COVID-19 pandemic. It also recommends the suspension of notarization requirement unless required by law, reduction of signatories and requirements, adoption of the whole-of-government approach and online payment schemes, or considering waiver or deferment of payments. The IATF has imposed new guidelines with regards to donations that will help the Philippines step up its fight against COVID-19. In a palace press briefing on Wednesday, Cabinet Secretary Carlo Negrales said the IATF has designated the Office of Civil Defense as the main coordinating body for all domestic donations that will be used for the management of COVID-19. A government agency that will be a recipient of the donations needs to submit a request to the Department of Budget and Management to get access to the donated funds. Government agencies that will likewise receive donations in kind are directed to make a report to OCD. International financial donations would be evaluated and decided on by a technical working group that will be comprised of the OCD, DBM, Department of Foreign Affairs, Department of Finance, and Department of the Interior and Local Government. The Armed Forces of the Philippines welcomed on Wednesday the unilateral ceasefire from March 26 to April 15 declared by the Communist Party of the Philippines' New People's Army. The CPP-NPA on Tuesday declared the truce as a direct response to calls of UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres for a global ceasefire between warring parties. The truce is to allow the unhampered and immediate medical, health, economic assistance to the people affected by the disease. AFP acting spokesperson Ernesto Torres said they hope they will be sincere not only for the period of COVID-19 but at all times. He, however, said the AFP has reservations that the ceasefire will lessen fears of attacks. This is because the CPP NPA has a known history of attacking civilian and military targets, even if they had already declared a truce. Just a day after the UN called for a global ceasefire, NPA fighters attacked an indigenous people's community in Kapalong Town in Davao del Norte Tuesday morning. Captain Jerry Lamosau, chief of the Army's 10th Infantry Division Public Affairs Office, said no one was hurt in the 10-minute encounter. Government troops responded to reports that an undetermined number of rebels attacked a Manobo settlement in Sitio Tapayanon, Barangay Gupitan. The Army's 60th Infantry Battalion said they were able to anticipate the attack after receiving civilian tip-offs on the NPA's planned tactical offensive against the troops conducting community support programs in the area. The Eastern Mindanao Command has condemned the NPA attack. Government troops have rescued a doctor kidnapped in Sulu by the Abu Sayyaf group last February. More on this and other news from the provinces from Ruth Abigita Carlos. Philippine Army Commander Gilbert Gapay on Wednesday commended troops for their valuable role in rescuing a doctor earlier kidnapped by Abu Sayyaf terrorists in Sulu. On Tuesday, Army troops with their police counterparts successfully rescued Dr. Daniel Moreno during operations against ASG terrorists led by Mundi Sawadjaan at Barangay Bangalan in Danan, Sulu. Moreno was abducted by the terrorist group from his clinic at Barangay Walled City last February 4. 
Meanwhile, the local government of Kalinga has assured dialysis patients access to facilities while the Luzon-wide enhanced community quarantine is in effect. The Interagency Task Force for Emerging and Re-Emerging Diseases in the province said a list of names and addresses of locals who undergo dialysis or chemotherapy in medical facilities in Region 2 is already collated. Governor Ferdinand Tuban said the list would allow the provincial government, the six municipalities, and this component city to address the needs of the patients during the month-long quarantine. In other news, the city government of Gapan has distributed live chickens to every family as part of the day-to-day -day assistance during the Luzon-wide enhanced community quarantine period. The delivery of one sack of rice worth 50 kilograms per family is also being undertaken in the city. For the PNA Newsroom, I'm Ruth Abigita Carlos. In our business news, domestic fundamentals remain strong and can address the expected excess in the government's budget deficit and spending as it addresses the impact of COVID-19 in the country. Finance Secretary Carlos Dominguez said the enhanced community quarantine and the ban against the entry of foreigners will have very serious effects on the livelihood of the people. He said this is why President Rodrigo Duterte asked for emergency powers to be able to realign funds from both within this year's national budget and outside. To date, the government has announced an initial stimulus package amounting to 27.1 billion pesos for equipment and medical supplies as well as support for workers who were not able to work due to the pandemic. The National Economic and Development Authority estimates that total loss from the impact of the pandemic on the economy amounts to between 428.7 billion and 1.35 trillion pesos. Dominguez said they are firm on having the budget needed to support the poor and lift the economy from the impact of COVID-19. Up next, the DILG is confident the enhanced quarantine will be lifted by April 12. And OFWs affected by COVID-19 are set to receive cash assistance worth $200. The PNA Newsroom returns after these reminders. Alamin kung paano ang tamang pagsusuot ng surgical mask. Una, hawakan ng mask sa strap at siguruhin natatakpan nito ang inyong bibig at ilong. Tandaan, ang may kulay na bahagi ng mask ang dapat nasa labas. Ito lamang ang tamang paraan ng pagsuot nito. Ihulma ang nose piece o maliit na metallic strip ayon sa hugis ng inyong ilong. Iwasan ang paghawak sa inyong ilong at bibig. Kung marumi na ang mask, hubarin nito gamit ang strap at itapon nito sa isang basurahan. Siguruhin ang maayos na paghuhugas ng kamay gamit ang sabon at tubig. Ang surgical mask ay dapat gamitin ng mga pasyenteng may sakit sa baga o mga taong mayroong ubo, sipon at lagnat, mga nag-aalaga sa mga may sakit, at mga healthcare at frontline workers. Maaari ring magsuot nito kung kayo ay pupunta sa matataong lugar. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin ang tamang paraan ng pag-ubo upang mapigilan ang paglaganap ng Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ugaliing magdala ng panyo o tissue. Kung uubo o babahing, takpan ang buong ilong at bibig gamit ang panyo o tissue. Kung walang dalang panyo o tissue, maaaring gamitin ang braso na pantakip. Kung nakararamdam na kailangan umubo o bumahing, agad na dumistansya sa mga tao sa paligid. Huwag dumura kung saan-saan, gumamit ng tissue at itapon sa basurahan. Ugaliin ang paghuhugas ng kamay at paggamit ng alcohol o hand sanitizer upang mamatay ang mikrobyo. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to. Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Alamin ang mga dapat gawin sa lugar ng trabaho laban sa Coronavirus Disease 2019. Ang mga kumpanya ay dapat magbigay ng face mask sa kanilang mga empleyado. Bukod dito, magbigay kaalaman din patungkol sa COVID-19. 
Siguraduhing malinis ang kapaligiran. Maglagay ng sabon at hand sanitizer sa mga palikuran. Siguraduhing ligtas at nalutong maigi ang mga pagkain sa kantina. Obserbahan ang kalusugan ng mga empleyado at katrabaho. Kung sakali man na mayroon silang sintomas ng coronavirus disease, gaya ng lagnat, ubot sipon at hirap sa paghinga, ay agad ipasuri sa doktor. Basta't sama-sama at laging handa, kaya natin to! Isang paalala mula sa DOH, PCOO, KBP at ng himpilang ito. Interior Secretary Eduardo Año is confident that the Luzon-wide enhanced community quarantine to contain the coronavirus COVID-19 will be lifted on April 12. However, Año said it will still be subject to government's assessment. Even after the quarantine is lifted, he said, the government will continue to strictly enforce social distancing of at least six feet apart from each other. He said social distancing should also be observed by residents in Visayas and Mindanao, which are not covered by the national government's quarantine. Since the quarantine has yet to be lifted, he said, draconian measures are needed to prevent a sharp peak of COVID-19 cases. At present, Anyo said he saw no need to expand the quarantine to Visayas and Mindanao, but he is open to that possibility if recommended by the Interagency Task Force for the Management of Emerging Infectious Diseases. Cash assistance amounting to $200 or over 10,000 pesos will be provided to overseas Filipino workers whose work were affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Labor Secretary Silvestre Bello III said the government is doing its best to address the immediate needs of displaced workers and to those belonging to the most vulnerable sectors. About 70,000 OFWs are expected to be provided with cash assistance. To avail of the said program, OFWs must submit their certificate of employment issued by their agencies. Bellio also urged employers in the private sector to apply to DOLE's COVID-19 Adjustment Measure Program. The program offers a one-time 5,000 peso financial support to employees of companies or business establishments that have adopted flexible work arrangements or temporary closure due to the pandemic. In our foreign news, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on late Tuesday announced a countrywide lockdown for three weeks, restricting a population of over 1.3 billion indoors. Modi also confirmed an allocation of $19.6 billion to procure medical equipment and protective gear, testing facilities, personal protection equipment, intensive care units, and also training of medical and paramedical staff. Meanwhile, the Ministry of Health and Family Welfare confirmed that 118 laboratories have been included in the Indian Council of Medical Research Network of COVID-19 testing with a capacity to test 12,000 samples per day. A total of 22 private lab chains have registered with the Indian Council of Medical Research for COVID-19 testing. The COVID-19 cases in India crossed the 500 mark on Tuesday, jumping to 519, including 10 deaths. Let's take another look at today's biggest stories. President Duterte supports the National Action Plan of the Interagency Task Force to stop the spread of COVID-19. The Anti-Red Tape Authority urges agencies to adopt a zero red tape policy amid intensified efforts against COVID-19. The New People's Army attacks an indigenous people's community a day after calls for the declaration of a global ceasefire. And the DILG is confident the enhanced quarantine will be lifted by April 12. Thank you for watching another episode of the PNA Newsroom. To check out more news content, check our webpage or head onto the Philippine News Agency's Facebook and Twitter accounts. For more stories about the government and how it serves Filipinos, look for these hashtags in all of our social media platforms and websites. 
We are shown on the pages of the PCOO and its attached agencies. Also, watch us on television on PTV4 and IBC13. And that's your daily dose of the biggest stories that you need to know. From the PNA Newsroom, I am William Theo. Good day to all. Stay safe.